Greetings, you're with Tunisia Ali. And today, I wanted to share with you some very meaningful insights on using oracle cards and tarot, or tarot cards, as I say. These jewels have enriched my life in ways that I could never have imagined when I stood at my mailbox feeling as though I had committed a cardinal sin when I ordered my first box. Just based on ignorance and not knowing, and again, the problematic issue of listening to other people instead of partaking of the wonderment and this wonderful universe that God has placed us in. We're in a big playground. This is a time of self-discovery. And you have to be open to things, but when you're not, it's not your fault. When you're not open to something, it is so not your fault. It's all about the programming that you received early in your life from people who may have meant well, but just simply didn't know any better. A lot of people who talk about these oftentimes don't know enough about them, haven't used them themselves. And I think a lot of people who may talk about them, who say negative things, it has to do with the intention in which they use the cards. I believe everything is about intention. You can use the internet for evil. People use our holy books for evil. You can misuse anything. You can use your eyes for evil with the evil eye or looking at other people in an envious way, sending them a negative energy or a negative attachment. So it has to do with the purity of your intention, the purity of your heart and the way you operate. These fundamentally are just cards with messages. They're no different than opening up the pages in a book. You can take a book and flip to a page and it will have a message in it based on what you're flipping, what it is that you are thinking about at the time, and also like everything, what guidance is trying to reach you at that time. We live in a beneficent universe, okay? God is ever present, the creator is ever present, we are constantly, as some people say, the universe is working its ass off for your highest good in all moments. And so the way that spirit gets you moving is to give you insight and to send you messages, right? And those messages can come in all manner of ways. Look at that beautiful peacock. And this card says, you were born to shine and inspire. Practice humility to avoid jealousy. Be grateful for life and more good things will come. Be true to yourself and recognize your brilliance. Let's say you get this card on a day where you're feeling like crap. You're not feeling much like a peacock. And you set an intention and you ask God or spirit or whatever, give you a message, show you a sign that helps you to get through the difficulty that you're experiencing. And you pull this card. And this card reminds you that you're a shining star, that you're a divine being, that you're beautiful, that you have so much to offer the world and to be grateful. A message as simple as this, yet as profound as this, in that you received it and in that it managed to get to you somehow through millions of different uh, chaotic perfections and synchronicities that are constantly coming to us, it could change your life in that particular moment. You could pull another particular healing message from another deck, the polar bear. And it's telling you to know that challenges make you stronger. Have faith when you face adversity. Take time to rest, dream and renew your spirit. Embrace your psychic abilities. You carry the shaman within. Let's say you're going through a difficult time in your life and you're pushing through and, and you just need that bit of encouragement that you, maybe you're, no one else knows what you're going through regardless these messages will reach you. And when you choose a deck that you want to work with and you pull a card from that deck once every week or once, I don't know, um, once a day, 
you will find that the messages that come to you are the messages that you need. And even the messages that come to you that you don't realize you need, those messages are worth reflecting on because at some point you will see the value. This card jumps out. What does it say? Detox your friendships. What have I more recently been doing? Focusing on getting those dream killers and energy vampires out of my life. In the book that I, I wrote that's on Amazon, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, there are several entries in that book about the importance of keeping these dream-killing energies, these energy vampires, these people who sap your spirit, these people who don't bring anything into your life except energetic drain, these people who play the victim, the people who are negative, getting them out of your life. That's one of the main things that can actually block your abundance. So this part says your abundance flow is being affected by people with whom you're spending time. So be discerning about your associations and relationships. Choose to be with people who are inspiring, generous, and supportive. Now, some months ago, I got some more baggage out of my life, some more trash. And more recently, I'm picking apart or looking at the more subtle relationships that I have that just are not moving me forward. Uh, people who may be perhaps trying to use me or people who want something from me. I am working on cultivating relationships with people who are moving in the same direction as me because I need inspiration too. Birds of a feather flock together, right? So this card is reminding me I'm on the right track. This is saying continue to do that. Be selective. Be discerning. You saw the way it jumped up out the deck, right? So my cards kind of know that that's how I respond by jumping up out of the deck. So here's the other thing about these cards. You develop a relationship with the cards. You communicate with the cards. We're talking energy here. It's intention. So you send out an energetic frequency, right? It produces an outcome. It returns to you in like kind, whatever it is that you're sending out. By the same token, whatever's going on in your life has an energetic imprint, right? I work with this because I'm talking about Reiki now. Everything, uh, uh, your thought forms, your emotional reactions and responses, your triggers, your attitudes, your perceptions, things that are happening in your beautiful world have a frequency to them that some of us can see via color. We can see it by looking at the chakras in the body. But because it's energy, it's perceptible in all manner of ways. You perceive energy by how you feel, likely. When you walk into a room, you know if there's been drama there or there's a, a vibe in the air or you meet someone and you can't figure it out. You're trying to be polite, but there's something in that individual that your psychic self does not resonate with. So the energy's everywhere. So the energy's in the cards too. So when you send out, when you move about your life, you're carrying an energetic imprint which resonates with everything similar to it. So if you sit down and you pull a card, the card that's going to be attracted or magnetized towards you is going to be the card that reflects some insight about your particular situation. We're talking quantum physics here. We're not talking spooky reality. We're not talking um, the dark side of things. We're not talking about any of that. We are talking about cards with beautiful messages and imagery now some of these cards stimulate um some of you are very artistic and your your the subconscious speaks in symbols right and we know that as a part of the collective consciousness there's nothing new everything is a part of the collective every thought that was ever thought every thought that's ever going to be thought or thought so the subconscious deals in imagery so sometimes when you're looking at these cards Okay, something will pop out that maybe you don't recognize, but your subconscious is drawn to it and it directs you to feed into a message. Take this card completion. Look at that snake, right? Snake is one of my nemesis, but I'm working on my fear of snakes because I have manifested a few of them into my life through my thoughts. And so I'm working on that. I don't want to see any uh, until I'm ready. So I'm working on looking at the beauty of this creature. It's here for a reason. But look at this completion, right? So we think of snakes, we think of the Garden of Eden, the Tree of Knowledge, we think of the, the temptation, we can think of Kundalini energy moving up the spine through the chakras to release you and balance you and heighten your spirituality. We can also think of how a snake sheds its skin, right? 
And when we shed the old, when we shed the baggage, we allow the light of renewal to come into our lives. We allow the light of a fresh start to come into our lives. So you could pull this card and be in the midst of a divorce, right? This card, uh, I don't know if it, oh, it has the number nine, and nine is right before 10. 10 symbolizes completion as well. But um, this could be about the turbulence right before the breakthrough. It's about bringing something in your life to completion. Something is leaving as you're embarking upon some transformative particular phase of your life. So this card if you just looked at the image and didn't even bother to read the book, and I didn't bring the book down with me, you could get a lot. You look at these rainbow colors, right? You look at how the snake is um, eating his tail or he's caressing his tail, right? You can look at these images. You can look at the colors. Colors have meaning. Violet symbolizes um, the crown chakra, spirituality. We have all the chakras in here. Um, and so... There, um, you have the root and the sacral, you have this uh, solar plexus, you have the heart, you have the love chakra here. So it's, a, it's an amazing card. So the messages in these cards are amazing. Maybe you pulled a card of fire and you're in a space where you've been submissive and it's time for you to step up to the plate and it's time for you to let your passion go and maybe let somebody have it or take charge of your life. So the cards are amazing. So. I made this video today because I wanted you to be open to some of the benefits of using the, the Oracle cards because they have helped me in my life in immeasurable ways. And when I first started using them, I couldn't understand how when people said it's going to deepen your intuition, uh, the answer is simple, how that was really going to happen. But I have to tell you, it's deepened my intuition and in my readings with people. Um, you know, as one of my healing services, I offer um, tarot and oracle card readings. And I got to tell you that one of the things that this has really taught me, change the scenery. Second time today I got this card. What is this about change the scenery? I'm changing the scenery. I'm changing the scenery all day. I'm having a time connecting with this deck because when I pull these cards, I'm like, what is she talking about? This is the second time this card popped up today, guys. There are like 66 cards, 62 cards in this deck. So what is it about my scenery? I need to change something in my life. I need to change. Ooh. Well, you know, I am contemplating moving. I'm looking for something more aligned with my spirit, something in a more natural environment, away from more people. I kind of want to be isolated more. A lot of my work now is starting to happen online. So I don't have to physically be in an office, but I can be 30 to 40 minutes from my office. Right now, I'm about three miles from my office, which is great, but I need to look at this more. Something in my life, doggone it, is needing to change. Something in my life is needing to change. I got to look at this. I'm going to read the extended message again because for this card to pop up two times, the card before this in this deck today was decide the outcome about making your decision once you set your intentions, what you want your intentions to accomplish. So I made a more direct intention that as it relates to my book that I more recently released. This is now, if you see me calm down, right? This is now starting to speak to something that I think I might know what this is. So I'm kind of sobering up. So let me get out of this space because this is not about y'all. This is my stuff. I'm gonna have to go look back at that card. But oracles decks are what these are. The difference between an oracle deck and a tarot deck, and this is a gorgeous deck. You know, when you connect with these decks and you can find images that look more like you, it's just the most beautiful doggone thing in the world. I use these pictures on my vision boards. I use them for all sorts of things. But a tarot deck is usually a standard 78 cards, okay? And um, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That's like the Ten of Cups. It's like fulfillment, happiness, joy, um, all of those things. Um, so each card has a predetermined general meaning, but the meanings are so much deeper. They're super deep. And the more you learn about it, the deeper the meanings actually go over time. Because 
you begin to think in terms of symbol. Your your intuition starts to deepen. One day you might be looking at this and you may be like, okay, she's with the lion. She's facing her fears, right? Okay, because that's where you are in your mind. And then another day you may look at this and you might be like, damn, she's using her feminine wiles to subdue him, right? There's some sensuality going on there, right? Um, and you may be like, okay, how's this relating to me in my life? Maybe I'm having trouble with my husband. I'm coming at him from a masculine. I need to be in my divine feminine. You know how they say he's a teddy bear. I can get what I want from him, the art of being a woman, right? So you look at this a different way. But you realize that no matter the miss, um, the inequity between the two forces, the what would be perceptibly um, more timid or less aggressive trait can actually overcome something that seems larger than life, right? So you look at these cards in different ways. This card is also about self-love, loving on you. It's beautiful. But the difference between the tarot and the oracle is that these are four suites, just like the zodiac, air, uh, pentacles, which is earth energy, fire, which is wands. Uh, I said air, which is, which is uh, swords. And then cups, which are emotions. Now, this is the goddess of cups or the queen of cups. So all of the cards, I've never pulled this in a reading for someone who wasn't in a heartbreak, ever. So, and then you have the major arcana cards, which are 20 additional cards, 21, 22 cards in the deck, which symbolize the major, the hero's journey, the various stages of life that, humanity goes through regardless of who you are you have a beginning um, then you have the ability to transmute and manifest things in your life you have the ability to 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 have great things happen in your earthly world your spirit realm you then go through challenges as you move on in life after having guidance or being a part of religion um, or living according to tradition. You go through certain identity crises where you have to confront the darker aspects of yourself, right? And so um, there's just a journey. There, there's tough times. There's spiritual revelation. There's times of justice. There's times where you're dealing with your addictions and fighting your shadow self, dealing with your demons, right? Um, so all of these elements are coming up. There are times when after difficulty, you experience ease, right? The sun comes in, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Give me one second. Tanisha Ali, how can I help you? Yes. I can give it to you as soon as we hang up I'll make sure I forward it to you okay all right you're welcome my landlord never answers his phone so people call me because I have a sign in the plaza looking for rental space and I don't kind of want to say he ain't gonna call you back but if it is it is it'll happen if it's not it won't right so I just do my part I send them his number so anyway, like this is the card of you need to deal with your stuff. You got some negative attachments. Something is oppressive in your life. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe you're enslaved to a relationship, whatever. But we all have those aspects of ourselves. This will be similar to the snake card that you saw before, the world card. We all have those aspects of our lives that we need to confront, right? So there are 22 cards in the deck that deal with your spiritual your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual journey. And then we have all of the, the major, the minor arcana cards, which are all the other cards that tell the details of what you're actually going through. So um, people tend to use, I know I use both in my readings, and I, I work with both when I when I do readings for myself, and I've never had a, had a situation where I needed to question what came up because it doesn't matter if I use this deck or I use one of the other 20-something decks, tarot decks I have. They all going to give me a similar message. It's going to force me to go within myself and do the work. So the beauty of these cards is that they strengthen your intuition. Here is the book. I didn't realize I had it. I need to look at Change the Scenery. They strengthen your intuition. They And as they strengthen your intuition, 
as you're looking at these cards, you start thinking, you start going within, you start bringing up stuff that's in the subconscious that needs to come to your subconscious awareness. You start digging for the roots of who you are and why you pull this card and how it applies to your life. You start extrapolating, right? Which requires you to get quiet. It requires you to go in. As you begin to embrace the messages, you start to understand how the messages start to come to you. When you start to make space for messages, messages then start to flow. So it makes you more reflective, which means it quiets your mind and it allows more information to be channeled to you from the universe that doesn't have to come through these cards. These cards are just a tool. No different than you would go see a psychotherapist or a counselor and your interaction with them would bring you to certain new sight, new insights and would help you to synthesize how this applies to your life, right? It's just a tool until we get to a place where we no longer need things outside of ourselves and we can get the messages directly, okay? With more specificity. It's a fun tool that sheds our awareness on certain areas of our life, sometimes that we don't want to think about and sometimes that we do want to think about all the time. So it increases your sense of awareness. It helps you to delve more into areas of your spiritual journey. Uh, these cards have amazing themes and the most of them always the, the idea of being grateful comes across having faith, um, embracing a prosperity mindset like what you hear me talk about all the time ways that you need to heal, things that you need to do. They are just amazing. Now, this particular oracle deck is called, this is one of my favorite. It's called the Divine Oracle, okay, by Sonia Choquette. This other deck was by her too, the one that said change your scenery, which I'm having trouble binding with. It's a wonderful deck. And the messages in here are written as words instead of um, accept disappointment gracefully okay so although i may not consciously think i can identify with this right now this could have something to do with the past it could have something to do with something that's coming towards me that maybe i need to accept but either way it's going to remind me that if something doesn't go my way i need to accept it with grace and i need to be grateful for it right and i need to remember that everything is always working for my highest good. So there's a reason why you're watching this video today. I have, I don't know, a lot of decks, over 85 decks, because the decks also reflect where you are in your journey, okay? You'll, you'll, you'll find that certain decks will feed you differently depending upon what you're focusing on. There's certain spiritual decks that deal with the spiritual journey. There's certain decks that deal with relationships. There's certain decks that deal with healing. There's these, these animal decks, which are wonderful. If um, you feel somehow um, a little timid or put off by the word tarot and you feel some kind of way, choose an animal deck. They're very easy to work with. The energy is beautiful. These nature spirits are amazing. And oh my God, this is a beautiful deck. This one is by Jody, Jody Bergsma, but also um, Colette Baron-Reed, which is the, the lady who has done the shaman deck, okay? Her animal deck is freaking amazing. It's back there. I wish I had it, but it's amazing. But this deck has animals on it, but it's a shaman deck, right? So I'm riding down the street. I see two eagles last weekend as I rode out into a country area just to get a feel for where I want to move, right? and what would be a natural environment that would be conducive to my spirit at this particular time. And two eagles flew above me at different times, right? So I'm like, okay, eagles, eagles, eagles. So I come home and I look up what the message is that eagles are. Everything in this environment around us, there's nothing that happens by mistake. The click of a button that leads you to a video, the stepping out of your house at a certain time that saves you from an accident, the one minute that you're late from work that costs you your job, which is a job that has made you miserable, which then leads to you embracing a part of yourself that you never thought was possible and going on to live your passion and purpose. Things never happen by mistake. So anything that crosses our path, we are to learn from it. We, it is there to teach us something. We can't take these animals that are in our environment for granted. They represent certain energy. All right, so the energy of this eagle, for example, 
is about taking a bird's eye view at a situation, studying that situation, looking at things from a different perspective, transcending something. It's also about your need to pay attention to what's going on around you and to be discerning. There's so many messages, but when these things cross your path, they cross your path for a reason. This video crossed your path for a reason. So I'm encouraging you to go for the Oracle deck. They're easy decks. Find one that you like. They have shadow decks that help you work on your inner being. They have um, decks that focus on archetypes. Um, they give you the shadow aspect plus the, the beautiful side of, of, of a particular trait. And then how it can be misused. There are decks. I said animal decks. They're healing decks. They're chakra decks. They're color decks. Color therapy. Um, they're decks on every single thing that you can imagine. As far and wide and infinite as the human mind and wisdom is, there is a deck to represent that diversity. So delve into tarot and oracle. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't listen to what people have told you, okay? Um, when I read holy books, I flip in a random way and open up to a page asking that something in that book jump out to me that I need for that day. It's the same principle. You will always get what you need because the universe is working its best to move you towards your highest good. And as long as you're willing to grow and you're not blocking anything that's trying to reach you, everything that's trying to come your way will actually meet you and intersect with your life in the most beautiful of ways. So open yourself up to the flow. On the other side of this monitor is my window with all these leaves starting to blow is reminding me that fall is here, that fall is here. And this is a time of change. This is a time of hunkering down. This is a time of getting into what it is that's your sacred space, allowing yourself to change in ways, experiencing the change, welcoming the change, knowing that it's coming, knowing that life is about seasons. I've had an amazing spring and summer. I'm moving into the fall where I'm gonna hunker down and focus even more on what it is I'm trying to push through in the months of fall through winter so that when spring is upon me again, a whole new life, a whole new additional level and grade of prosperity is awaiting me, God willing. So this was your message for today. You're with Tanisha Ali of Butterfly Transformations, connecting you to the vision of who you truly are to the vision of who you truly are. I like to work with people who are ready for change and transformation in their life and are no longer going to settle for mediocrity in their experiences, in the situations they attract, in prosperity, whatever. I help women to gain clarity. I help them to up-level their mindsets, to hear and clear, hear and clear, <laughs> hear and clear, heal and clear energetic and emotional um, blockages, roadblocks to success, and to manifest abundance. So if you're looking for a spiritual mentor or life coach, a guide on the side, somebody to help you shift your life into a higher frequency, maybe you just need a Reiki energy clearing. Maybe you need me to connect to your energy from afar or at uh, at, at a distance, you know, or face to face and work on your chakras. Maybe you're feeling stuck. Maybe you're feeling alone. Maybe you're feeling confused. Maybe you're not feeling energized and you're wondering, you know, like, what is this about? My life is out of balance. I'm out of alignment. I need an accountability partner. I need someone to work with me to help me shift my vibration. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do every day. That's what gives me joy. That is what has taken years off of my face and that's what, to me, makes work waking up every day worth it. It makes me grateful to the Creator every single day. It makes me contemplate the small miracles that I continue to draw into my life. And it gives me even more passion about helping others do the same because I am not special. Me, none of us are special. Not really. 
you're not having a hard time because you're being picked on or you're special. I'm not having a good time because I'm being picked on or special. I'm just here like you are to discover who you truly are and to embrace the true nature of reality, which is not this stuff that we've allowed to limit us. So I want you to have a beautiful day and be divine, be inspired, be abundant, and be prosperous. Be tarot and oracle. <laughs>